On Resolve Problem segment tonight, more misleading reporting by the elite print press. Last week, we told you that the front pages of some urban newspapers were misleading you. It wasn't an uprising in Iraq at all. It was an insurrection by a radical Shiite group that was put down a couple of days. Here's another. In today's New York Times, an article by Ann Thompson puts forth that the success of the passion is being generated by crazy right-wingers. Thompson says, quote, the movie had a movie star director willing to spend his own money who understood how to target large numbers of well-organized church groups and political conservatives. He was able to deploy partisan news media pundits like Bill O'Reilly to appeal to his constituents to show their support by seeing the movie. Ms. Thompson's statement is a flat-out lie. I never recommended the film. I said it was too violent. I simply stated Gibson had a right to put it out without being branded an anti-Semite. Thompson claims Gibson deployed me. I'd like to see some evidence of that, madam. What a crock. One more. You may remember a bunch of dishonest reporters and character assassins telling you I lied about my upbringing about living in Levittown, New York. Yesterday I came across this at my mother's house. It's the deed to the house where I was raised in Levittown. You see the words Levittown, New York. So I guess I'll be getting apologies from the New York Times, the Washington Post, NPR, and all the others who called me a liar. With us now, Dr. Paul Levinson, who teaches media studies at Fordham University. Does this stuff bother you? Not as much as it bothers you. I think the uh, difference between uh, a revolution, an uprising, and an insurgency is really very minor. I could see being upset if the New York Times made up a story that there were military activities going on and nothing was happening. Well, wait, all right, let's walk through it here. Mm -hmm. The impression the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the LA Times gave last week was that there was a general uprising across the country that was popular driven. The word uprising is localized act of popular violence. There was no popular violence, as Mr. Talibani stated at the top of the program. It was generated by a minority helped by Iran that wants a totalitarian regime. So you don't think that's a distortion? I don't know what happened there. For all I know, there was uh, a much worse situation, and our military put it down. What I'm saying is the difference professor. between an insurgency and an uprising is really You very don't see minor. the difference. I see the Between a popular I uprising of all the people in a country, like Berlin, throwing them out, and a, and a small segment of Shiites causing trouble. You don't see the difference. The New York Times didn't say all the people in the country. They, they said, said there was a popular, uprising. popular uprising. And it wasn't. And it couldn't have possibly been put down in two days. All well, right. With the wisdom of hindsight, it wasn't. Let's go. <laughs> the wisdom. I said it right there. It wasn't because our guys were telling us what it was. Although to be fair, some Fox people have used the word uprising. Unfortunately, the passion for a year. This New York Times been trying to ban this movie. Now the most successful film financially of all time. They're still trying to tell you it's a bunch of right wing religious fanatics going to see it. Not true. All right, and that Gibson now has enlisted me to try to get my viewers out to see the movie. Flat out a lie, this Ann Thompson, flat out untrue. Does it disturb you? Well, I read the article you're talking about, uh, and it seems the word deploy is the word that uh, you're upset about. And, uh, you know, I'm willing to agree that it's probably not the most uh, apt word. But it's not impossible that Gibson uh, had in mind the fact that you would give the movie coverage well, don't on the show. To, as a journalist, don't yeah. you have to prove that or have some evidence to that That's, effect? Well, that wasn't a hard news story. It appeared in the It wasn't a hard section. news story. Yes, okay. well, the, it's subject to interpretation. It was an analysis of the success uh, of Gibson's movie. You don't teach your students this kind of rationalization, tortured logic, do you? You teach them to be accurate and to use language carefully, do you not, Professor? I, sure, I teach my students how to think critically. Then why not to stick it up for this newspaper here who's, who, who distorts things on purpose all day long? I don't know if they distort things on purpose. Really? I think the media are inexact. Thomas Jefferson recognized this back in 1800. He said, not only uh, is yesterday's news fit to wrap fish in, so is most of today's right. well, I'm giving you two the Passion of the Christ, a giant culture war story, Iraq, the most important story, and I've given you two solid examples of how the New York Times distorts on purpose their coverage and doesn't bother you. That frightens me. Why do you say on purpose? Because what? they have an agenda. It's, it's, they hate the passion. Yeah. They hate the movie. Well, you know that better than I do. You bet I, I do. I don't know what their agenda is. I agree that they're not perfect. No medium is perfect. You just admitted that Fox News used the word uh, uprising. That's right. And they, and they should. So, so that's the point. All right. But that was things. done inadvertently. This is done on purpose. What proof do you have? I do. That, I that have the agenda. articles that have been written in a year. Well, Professor, we appreciate it very much. Thanks for coming in and giving another point of view.